Now, accepting that this is the density of the washer, uh, we're going to find the moment of inertia of a disk of radius r and mass m. And to be uh, explicit, we don't want to confuse uh, the m here, which is the mass of the washer, with the mass of the disk. So we're going to say the moment of inertia of the disk is one half the moment of inertia is one half the mass of the disk times r squared. And in order to find the moment of inertia of that disk, we're going to first have to find the mass of the disk. And this would be a good place for you to pause and see if you can work that out without looking at what I've done. OK, so mass of the disk is uh, what? It's the area of the disk times its density. And that's uh, very straightforward. If you haven't already paused, you should fill in the area and the density and see what you get before you look at what I've got. OK, well, the area is pi r squared. Uh, where r is the radius of the disk. And the density is m over pi times r2 squared minus r1 squared. Just to be sure we keep the m's straight, I've done m sub washer, mass of the washer, and the pi r2 squared minus r1 squared. Just brought forward from where we uh, just were. Uh, and then we just simplify that. And I'm going to put r squared over r2 squared minus r1 squared uh, times the mass of the washer. The pi's divide out. So there's the mass of any old disk of radius r, uniform mass density, equal to the mass density of our original washer. OK, so what? Uh, uh, what's the moment of inertia? Uh, you should do that. OK, well, the moment of inertia, you just plug mass of the disk, this expression, in here, and here you got it. OK, so we get an r squared out here. And of course, then we have an r squared over r2 squared minus r1 squared from here, r squared over r2 squared minus r1 squared. And we have the 1 half from here. Uh, and we have the mass of the washer from here. So. Uh, it all works out fairly in a fairly straightforward manner. And we end up with uh, combining the r squared and the r squared. We have an r to the fourth. And here's the moment of inertia of the disk. I'm not going to read it to you. Um, you can read it yourself. Now, how are we going to use that to solve our original uh, problem of finding the mass density of the washer? Not drawn as well as it was before, but I can't draw two concentric circles uh, as well as I did the first pair. Uh, you can't do that twice in a row. It would be a crime against nature or something. OK. Um, anyhow, this represents our original problem. So uh, the moment of inertia for disk of radius r2, a complete disk without a hole in it, uh, having the same density that we got over here, is then, well, we just do this, where m now stands for the mass of the washer. We're back to the original problem. Uh, here we have mass m for the shaded region. OK, if we had the same mass density uh, throughout for an entire disk, well, here would be our moment of inertia. OK, just it's the same as this formula except uh, r, the radius of the disk, is now r2. And the mass is mass of the washer, as it always was. But I'm just going to call that m now, because that's the only mass we uh, need at this point. OK? Um, same expression for i1, except we have an r1. OK, so what's our moment of inertia for the washer? Well, it's I2 minus I1. Well, I2 and I1 both have common factor. Um, big M over R2 squared minus R1 squared, and also the 1 half. So we factor M over 2 times the quantity R2 squared minus R1 squared out. And then uh, we have. Uh, again, this one minus this one is going to leave us r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. You can write out intermediate steps if you like, if you don't understand that. But hopefully that's clear. OK, so here's our formula. But this formula is not quite simplified. OK, uh, 
how do we simplify this? Well, we factor the numerator. We could also factor the denominator, but it's going to turn out that that's unnecessary. Factoring the numerator, uh, we have a difference of two squares, um, r2 to the fourth being the square of r2 squared, r1 to the fourth being the square of r1 squared. Um, we could do a u substitution, let u equal r2 squared, u2 equal r2 squared, u1 equal r1 squared, and we would have u2 squared minus u1 squared, which would factor into u2 minus u1 times u2 plus u1. I shouldn't have to explain that algebra to you. Um, but if you don't understand it, don't let that be known. Okay? Uh, doing that in one form or another, you can verify that this factors into r2 squared minus r1 squared times r2 squared plus r1 squared. The r2 squared minus r1 squared matches the denominator, which is why I say it it's becomes unnecessary to factor this denominator because it just divides out. And this leaves us uh, the expression that we see on page 291 of the 13th edition of the text. I don't know where that might be on a subsequent edition. Um, but it's the formula uh, for this sort of a washer or cylinder. And, uh, you know, the R2 squareds minus R1 squareds cancel out, divide out. And we end up with R2 squared plus R1 squared with the 1 half M. And it should be clear that this is a, uh, a formula that's very easy to derive if you just keep your wits about you and think about what you're doing. The algebra is not difficult, and the concepts are not particularly difficult. So based on the fact that the moment of inertia of a uniform disk of radius r and mass m is 1 half mr squared, we get this. Now, we could get this by direct integration. It would actually be simpler than this derivation. Uh, and, of course, the formula 1 half mr squared uh, we also get by an integration, and we'll see that in a, a class extension. We're still in class summary here, so uh, we'll leave it at this for now.